this man, he got his mind right. Okay with being famous, but he can't stand the limelight. Knows enough language to reach the heinous and tainted mind. But when he open wide, they like God. Who you sound like? Uh, yo, yo, yo. It's your boy Stex. On this episode of Roaches to Wrenches, we're installing the replacement engine for the Camry. Getting the engine into the bay is the most difficult part because of the clearance issues which we discussed in the previous episode. However, before this, I spent about an hour using vice grips, a blowtorch, and WD-40 to get the dowel pin out of the transmission. But now, at this point, everything is ready to go back together. I contemplated removing the water pump as well as anything on the timing cover that could potentially prevent the engine from getting back in the bay, but in the end, I correctly deemed this to not even be necessary, and I also didn't want to deal with the added time and expense for a new gasket. Before lowering the engine down, I used zip ties to strap the AC compressor to the cooling fan assembly, which kept it out of the way. As long as the engine is kept level, it shouldn't be too difficult to squeeze it in. I did have to roll it forward a little to so the solenoid on the back of the engine could clear the brake fluid reservoir. I thought about removing said reservoir, but didn't want to risk losing fluid and having to bleed the brakes and ABS pump, which requires a special scan tool. Once the engine is in the bay, everything is done in the reverse order of what we did in the last episode. The replacement engine cost me just under 800 bucks after taxes and came out of a 2009 Camry with 147,000 miles on it, 10,000 miles less than the one we took out. Since catastrophic engine failure isn't a common issue on this model, there's no reason to pay extra for a low mileage unit. These engines, however, do tend to burn a little oil after 100,000 or so miles, which is why it's important to check the dipstick every once in a while between services. Some people blame issues like this on service intervals which are too far apart, insisting that the oil should be changed every 3,000 miles instead of Toyota's recommended service interval of 5,000 miles. And on the other hand, I've heard auto manufacturers as well as many individuals online who like pushing the idea of 15,000 mile oil changes and lifetime coolant and transmission fluid. So take that for what it's worth, especially for those who aren't very mechanically inclined and would be in big trouble in the event of catastrophic engine failure. I once had a Honda Accord, which I ran dry of oil, not once, but on two separate occasions. I also went 20,000 miles without changing the oil. I just didn't care. It had over 200,000 miles on it and cost me 900 bucks. Since I could have just done a junkyard engine swap for less than $200, I wasn't too religious about the maintenance, but for most people, including whoever ends up owning this Toyota, it's a different story. If you have a high mileage vehicle, do yourself a favor, check your oil once in a while. Don't let a stupid mistake cost you an arm and a leg. Another thing we always see the internet insist on is the usage of heavier weight oil instead of what the manufacturer recommends. I know that even on this channel we've had comments like that on some of the F-150 videos. The truth is that it can be rather unwise to deviate from the recommended oil type on most modern engines. A couple years ago I owned a Chevy Silverado 2500 with a 6 liter V8 under the hood. With the truck having about 260,000 miles on it, the oil pressure was understandably a little low, but after adding a quart of Lucas oil, during an oil change, the pressure shot up to within specification. With that being said, heavier oil may be a great solution on, say, older engines. But in modern applications, with many of them having multiple solenoids, timing chains, and cam adjusters, it would be wise to just trust the engineers and use the correct oil to ensure everything operates like it's designed to.
In total, I spent about $55 on fluids. The recommended pink coolant was about 20 bucks a gallon. And 5 quarts of 5W20 full synthetic was about $15. Once everything was hooked up and all the fluids were in, the car ran great. I also want to reiterate something I said in the last episode, which was that this was one of the easiest engine swaps I've done. The car was bought on January 1st. I bought the replacement engine the day after. And I had the car running with the replacement engine on January 6th. I wasn't working on it all day, just a couple hours each day here and there. Just taking my time with it. The reason the episodes were uploaded a week apart is just for the sake of content, which was too much to bunch up in one episode. So as for now... The car runs and drives fine. It still has some issues which will be addressed in a later episode. But, um, yeah. But that's going to be it for the video. I'm grinding. I hope you all are doing the same. You all stay strong, stay healthy, stay inspired. I'm out. God bless.